Okay, for this pick line insertion, we've got all the equipment set up here. We've got an x-ray compatible table with an arm board for the patient to abduct their left arm out at 90 degrees. We've got x-ray equipment, ultrasound machine, uh, pick line ECG guidance technology, an equipment tray set up, sharps bin, tape measure, tourniquet, mark for the arm. Now the patient is uh, supine with the left arm abducted in the tourniquet applied. Quick ultrasound scan reveals a suitable basilic vein that compresses easily. And we're just going to put a mark in the middle of the upper arm at the site of where we intend to puncture the vein. Now we get the tape measure. I'm going to measure from the right intercostal space, just adjacent to the right sternal border, up towards the jugular notch. Then we're going to go from there across to the axillary crease, and then from there down towards where we've marked the vein, and the length of the pick line we're going to cut will be about 44 to 45 centimetres in length. So at this point, you would go and scrub in, cut the pick line to length, and then we're going to clean the patient's arm, apply all the sterile drapes, identify the vein and ultrasound, inject some local anaesthetic, and give this time to work. Then we take the needle, again with midlines, it's the same technique. Puncture the skin at appropriate angle, at the centre point of the probe, centred over the vein. And take your time. Here we see the, the vein being compressed and the tip of the needle lying above the actual upper vein wall. Around this point we're just doing gentle controlled thrusts with the needle just to puncture that top vein wall and get it into the centre of the vein lumen. Now that we're in the vein there's a flashback of venous blood. Now at this point we're going to advance the guide wire through the needle directly into the basilic vein. I'm just going to use the ultrasound probe to confirm we're actually inside the vein. And you can see that white dot in the middle of the basilic vein confirms we are in the right position. Now we're going to remove the needle, leaving the guide wire in position. Take the blade, make a small nick in the skin where the guide wire enters through the anaesthetized area. Take the sheath, advance it over the guide wire, into the arm and into the basilic vein. Now at this point, your assistant can release tourniquet and then we remove the inner sheath and guide wire. Now we take the pick line which has already been cut to length, advance it in short distance At this point, your assistant hands you the red ECG wire, which you can attach onto the end of the pick line. It screws in as seen. 
once that's secured, you can hand the other end of the red ECG wire out to your assistant who can connect it to the wire that's actually connected to the patient currently. So this red ECG wire will actually record the intracavitary ECG reading. Now at this point the pick line is only in a short distance so all we're actually picking up is the top ECG trace. If we advance it in a little bit further we start to pick up the intracavitary ECG reading which at the moment is just normal. You can see this patient is in sinus rhythm. As we advance it in a bit further ECG is obviously very very sensitive and there's a lot of disturbance so if you just pause keep your hands away from the patient again we're just picking up that normal ECG recording on top and a normal intracavitary ECG reading as well. Now we're going to continue to advance the pick line into the patient and now focus on what happens with the actual ECG trace. Again, still normal, normal size P waves on the bottom trace. Now at this point we can see there is a clear increase in the size of the P wave, suggesting that the tip of the pick line is progressing down the superior vena cava. Now at this point you can see the disturbance on the lower trace indicating that the pick line has been advanced in a little bit more. If we allow it to settle and re-examine the trace you can clearly see that the P waves are now much bigger although they've got a very slight negative deflection and this indicates that the line tip has now passed the caveoatrial junction and the tip of the line is sitting partially in the upper right atrium. So we see some disturbance again as the line has been advanced. Now that it's settled we can see that the P wave has become biphasic and this is suggesting that the tip of the pick line is now wholly within the right atrium. So at this point we've just taken an x-ray. Of note the patient has had recent major bowel surgery and requires post-operative total parenteral nutrition. She's therefore got a right internal jugular vein central line in place which is highlighted by the white dots seen on the screen. Uh, the central line has its tip currently lying in the lower third of the superior vena cava. Because the patient requires prolonged parenteral nutrition we're inserting this left side pick line whose tip is currently lying wholly inside the right atrium and this is represented by the red dots. At this point we would withdraw the pick line a short distance with a view to achieving a maximally positive P wave on the intracavitary ECG trace. So now we shoot back to the ECG and what we actually see at this point is there is a, still a large P wave but it's got a very slight negative deflection so we've not yet achieved the maximal P. The line tip is therefore still partially inside the upper right atrium and therefore we should withdraw the line slightly so we can achieve the maximal P. So at this point we would withdraw the line. So now we've got a freeze frame and we can see that there is a maximal P wave demonstrated and there is no negative deflection. And this confirms that the tip of the pick line is sitting at the cavoatrial junction. At this point, you, the operator, can decide on the final position of the line tip. We prefer to leave the line tip at the caboatrial junction, although it's fine to leave the tip just poking into the right atrium or just above the caboatrial junction in the lower third of the superior vena cava. 
So just to help you, the viewer, identify the key P wave changes, we've got another trace here. You can see there's some biphasic P waves at this point, which indicates the tip of the pick line is wholly within the right atrium. Now if we pull the line slightly back, let the trace settle, we now see a large positive P wave with a slight negative deflection which suggests the line is still partially inside the upper right atrium. And now at this point, pull the line ever so slightly back and we can see now that there is a maximally positive P wave with no negative deflection, which again confirms the line tip is at the cave or atrial junction, which is an ideal final pick line tip position. Now in closing, once you are satisfied with the final pick line position, you should secure the pick line in place in the same way as a standard midline, and the finished product is seen here.